Hi, my name is Laura Helfrick, and I am a mom of two boys, and I am married for 14 years, and we live in the interior of British Columbia. I have been a professional accountant for the past 15 years, and I'm making a transition into becoming a life coach to help support women who are impacted by ADHD. When were you first diagnosed with ADHD? So I was diagnosed with ADHD probably about three years ago now when I was 40. Um, I think I have a pretty unfortunately typical story for a lot of women who are intensive ADHD type. Um, we just tend to fly under the radar until like all of our responsibilities just pile up to the point where we can no longer support and manage um, and it turns into chaos. So um, unfortunately it was a while to get diagnosed. Um, there wasn't a lot of uh, psychiatrists in my city. And so while I was waiting to be diagnosed for ADHD, um, just with all the um, life responsibilities and some events happening that were outside of my control. Unfortunately, I um, went into a major depression and uh, this caused me to be off work for about six months. During this time, I was actually able to um, see a psychiatrist through, it was called Rapid Access Clinic. And um, ironically, I got to see the psychiatrist that I had been on the wait list for two or three years to see. And so he diagnosed me with major depression, but he was also able to diagnose me with ADHD. Yeah, so it's one of these things where like, really, I see the ADHD in retrospect. When I was actually going through my childhood, um, I didn't see it. I was one of those stereotypical A students, top of my class. Um, and I think the key was, is that I was interested in school. And so I worked really hard at it. Um, you know, I did have the perfectionist tendencies that a lot of people with ADHD can have. Um, and also I, my family just lifestyle set me up to support me without even knowing it. So I had a stay at home mom who, my parents believed in like education being very important. And my mom felt it was her job to keep things going around the house. So that just left me with a lot of time to um, either study or enjoy myself and be a kid and play outdoors. So I got a lot of physical activity, which would have supported my ADHD. And I um, had a lot of like, focused time. I didn't have a lot of pressures or deadlines. Um, and like I said, I was very interested in school. And so it was like easy for me. Now um, it's interesting because like I said, in retrospect, we can see it. Um, for example, I was reading through some old report cards and it was saying about how like I could be distracted and um, my heart on myself, my perfectionism, that came up a lot. Um, and then, yeah, if I wasn't interested in something, then it was really hard to make me do it. So I was a bit kind of stubborn that way. After diagnosis, did you seek treatment? Um, I think it was like a mixture of everything. So I did, um, I did go on stimulants. I've tried quite a few. Um, they work a bit for me. They don't work as amazing as I've seen in other people, but um, that was definitely like a route that helped. Um, my primary care physician is very supportive and he, you know, helped me with um, medication, but also like lifestyle. And so, you know, whether it be nutrition or exercise, I... Um, I also, once I learned I had ADHD, um, the chaos that had ensued when I had a young family and was trying to work full time, it all just made sense. And so, you know, you have to be your own biggest advocate. And so I decided I needed to um, accommodate myself. And I decided 
that um, once I recovered from the depression that I would only work part time so that I can manage my other responsibilities and keep my sanity. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say like my doctor was prescriptive about it. It was more that he understands that like we're not just our individual symptoms, you know, like we're a whole person. And so, you know, by leading a healthier lifestyle, it does man help to manage the ADHD symptoms. What are some of the biggest obstacles you have faced because of your ADHD? Um, I think that like, I think it's normal for people to struggle when they leave university. So I did well in university, but I definitely felt a little lost coming out of it, you know, not having the structure. Um, I was lucky that I had a job lined up right away. Um, but in typical ADHD fashion, I don't think I even lasted a year. And uh, because I decided I wanted to go off and spend five weeks in Europe. <laughs> So um, coming back from that, um, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I actually did temp work for, for a few years. And that gave me some like exposure to different, um, different work environments. And it also allowed me to not have kind of the responsibility of an actual job. <laughs> because when you're a temp agent, you just go in and you just help and um, you don't own any of the stress. So that was really good. And then I eventually tired of that. And I um, decided to become a CA. Um, so I went back to um, university and got my diploma in accounting. Uh, and then I chose the CA path because it was like the most challenging. And I've always been kind of academic and pushing myself that way. So when I graduated and I was working um, at a big firm, you know, downtown Vancouver, it was just, it was too much. <laughs> it was a lot. So I lived there for, sorry, I did that for two years before I got married and moved with my husband. And so then when I moved here, I was like, I'm not going back to <laughs> public accounting. So. Um, so I guess the long story short is that to answer your question, I do make changes. Even when to other people, I have a good job, a stable job. Um, and then I did it again by, you know, deciding to become a life coach. How has your experience been in the workplace? I think in general, I don't recall a lot of um, discussion around mental health. Like it was there. I mean, HR is trying to be progressive, you know, but it was more coming from that versus like it actually being talked about amongst coworkers. Um, but when I like was, heading towards depression, you know, I had a very supportive manager and, um, you know, she did tell me I needed to look out for myself. And so I did feel like I was supported and there weren't consequences in that way. You know, what? it's been amazing. And I mean, of course, you know that a lot of um, ADHD people do really well in entrepreneurial roles. Um, I felt like it supported me because um, it allowed for me to have the flexibility with me and my children for appointments and stuff and not having to like worry about asking, you know, to get time off to do these things. Um, it also really allowed me to like step into my creative side. And so like for me, I'm one of my via character strengths is appreciation of beauty and excellence. And so what it meant is that like, you know, I could create, let's say, um, procedure documents, and I could make them look nice. I could go on Canva and, you know, spend that time because it would matter to me. But that doesn't matter to an employer, so I wouldn't do it there. Uh, 
I am very lucky. I am an internally motivated and driven person. And so I am very capable of like keeping myself on track and sitting down and getting my work done. Um, yeah, I don't need other people's um, expectations or managing. So I'm lucky that way. Has your ADHD changed with age? I think that's a really interesting question because when you're late diagnosed, all of a sudden you see all your symptoms, you know? And so I don't know, like, I would say I was very like successful and um, unimpacted by my ADHD overall um, up until my mid twenties. And so um Yes, I would say that as life's responsibilities, like a husband and children and um, a house and working full time, as that all piled on, yes, of course, the symptoms got a lot worse. Um, I mean, I've never, I've never been hyperactive per se, um, except for I used to have a lot of chatter in my mind, but that's the biggest thing that um, the medicine helped with was to quiet all the thoughts. I do find now that I've changed my life um, and simplified it that even when I am on a period where I'm not taking my medication, um, I don't have all those running thoughts. So um, yeah, so I would say that the kind of hyperactive um, mind has slowed down. So that's good. Um, but yeah, you just, you see how things that you just thought you were challenged with were actually your ADHD. <laughs> Have you discussed ADHD with your family? Yes, ADHD is alive and present in my household. Um, so not only do I have it, but both my boys do. And um, their struggles are very challenging. And so it is, um, we talk about it daily. I think we always struggle with our own children. And so I'm currently actually taking a course through CADEC on the refocus. Um, it's a wonderful course and it's teaching me all about executive functioning and how to support our kids. And so that's great to have all of that. But I have to say, like, I've been getting a little burnt out because I feel like I'm trying to approach it this way and this way and this way. And it's just not resonating with my children. But part of it is, is one's 10 and the other one's 13. And so they're changing too, you know? And so it's like everything just coming together all at once. So, I mean, just because, you know, I have some knowledge on ADHD, I still need external supports to help me manage my own children. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about ADHD? Yeah, it's always surprising to me when I run into people who don't know much about ADHD. I think especially because, you know, a couple of years ago, I went through a training school and most of us had ADHD, you know, and like, you know, my brothers have it, my kids have it, my dad has it, you know, like it's just just a part of everyday life for me. So then when I run into people who don't have much knowledge of ADHD, it always surprises me. Um, what I do find interesting is that like, as you learn more and you see the subtleties of it, because yeah, I think that there is a misconception of what ADHD is. And I think I'm going to guess they're going to address it in future DSMs, but um yeah, like it's not just hyperactivity and impulsivity and inattention, you know. Um, one of the huge things is like emotional dysregulation, you know, and that's one of the harder ones to deal with. Uh, but yeah, so it is really neat to be able to educate people on what ADHD is. And it's also interesting to see, like even on TV, like, people who you're like, oh, that's a presentation of ADHD. And I don't even think they know it, you know? <laughs> so it is, yeah, it's like 
anything, um, when you have that filter on, you start to see it everywhere. Do you feel ADHD has benefited your life? I'm not somebody who like, you know, necessarily follows the mantra of ADHD being a gift. But it's just so integral to us. And to me, there's nothing wrong there. It does not. It's not a defect. It's not something you have to fix. You know, you just have to figure out how to support yourself and try to like fit in a neurotypical world. So my ADHD like definitely led to my academic success all through school and university, 100%. Um, my, yeah, just the way I see things, you know, I put together connections that other people don't necessarily. Um, I think we're all different. And I just think that there are good things about it and there's challenges, but yeah. It's nothing we need to fix, in my opinion. What do you want people watching to know about your ADHD? My main message, and this is something that I came into when I started my life coaching. I realized, like, not only do I want to help support, you know, women with ADHD, but it's very important to me that people recognize that ADHD might be at play. It is so sad, like how many women struggle with mental health issues. And as you know, such a high comorbidity um, with ADHD, but oftentimes they just get treated for that mental health disorder without recognizing that there's underlying ADHD. And if you don't, you know, work to treat the ADHD, then you're never going to have the quality of life that, that you want. So... Part of the reason why I do what I do is because, I mean, I fell into a massive depression because I felt stuck and I felt like there wasn't anything I could do and I had no options. And then my life made me, you know, make different choices. And I don't want other people to have to take the same path. I want to show people that there are options even when you feel like there aren't any.